interactively in a large classroom can be a challenging proposition. Faculty members in the School of Biology at Georgia Tech recently designed an activity for their introductory biology class, which this semester has over 200 students. The idea of converting the student population in the room into a population of chili pepper plants. So if you had a red note card, then you were spicy, and if you had a yellow note card, then you were mild or sweet in terms of your pepper phenotype. And then we ran a series of simulations that either simulated natural selection occurring in the population or simulated genetic drift occurring in the population. These are two different microevolutionary processes. And natural selection, we harp on a lot, we talk about a lot. It's a mechanism of evolution that students have probably seen before. But genetic drift is usually new to them. And it's a more random process that doesn't have to do with um, individual phenotypes being better fits to their environment after evolution occurs, and so we were trying to get students to understand the difference between these two things using random number generation and calling out random numbers for individuals that perished through the evolution event or survived. having students be active in their learning process. It doesn't necessarily mean the kinds of stand up, sit down that we did in this activity. Uh, more active learning in this case is the students stopping to think what were the instructions that we followed to have natural selection occur and then for themselves what instructions would I have to create to have genetic drift occur. So making, having them actively processing and thinking about these processes instead of having them passively writing while I explain the processes. That's the difference in active learning. Yeah, if you're speaking, yeah, every time, because I always tell them, okay, so here's what you're doing. I'm Chrissy Spencer. I'm an academic professional in the School of Biology at Georgia Tech. Caliente